Welcome to A Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on nuclear physics from May June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss some important points about nuclear physics. Especially, we will discuss how to sketch different types of graphs. We will discuss how to sketch number of nuclei against time and how to sketch activity against number of nuclei. We will discuss these two types of graphs in detail so you can have clear understanding of these graphs. Let's study together, let's improve together. For question number 10, part A, we need to state what is meant by radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is simply the emission of ionizing radiations, or you can say nuclear radiations from unstable nucleus. So this is how you can define radioactive decay. Let's try to understand this one with one simple example. Imagine that we have unstable nucleus, means this one is unstable nucleus. And and this nucleus will try to be stable. For this nucleus to be stable, this has to emit nuclear radiations. Let's say this one is alpha emitter, so this will emit alpha particles to be stable. And when this will emit alpha particle, this will also emit gamma radiations because gamma radiations are emitted in alpha decay and also emitted in beta decay. Most of the time in questions, they will ask you where the extra energy has gone. So simply you can say it has been emitted in form of gamma radiations. In any nuclear reaction, there are emissions of gamma radiations. So in this case, this nucleus will also emit gamma radiations. And this is called radioactive decay. Means the spontaneous emission of nuclear radiations from this unstable nucleus is called radioactive decay. Let me show you the answer, how you can write down the answer for this question. This is how you can write down your answer. This question has two marks. You will get the first mark if you have written spontaneous emission of ionizing radiations. You will get one mark and that one is B mark. And the second B mark you will get if you have written unstable nucleus. You will get second B mark. This is how marks will be awarded. It is given to us a radioactive sample consists of an isotope X of half-life capital T that decays to form a stable product. Only X and stable product are present in the sample. At time T is equal to zero, the sample has an activity of A naught and contains N naught nuclei of X. On figure 10.1, we need to sketch the variation with time T of the number N of nuclei of x present in the sample. Your line should extend from time t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 3 capital T. Then same line. It doesn't mean you just need to sketch the line. It means you need to sketch the graph. First of all, let's try to understand how this nucleus x will decay. Initially nucleus x has Initially, nucleus X has N number of nuclei. After one half-life, there will be N naught by two nuclei. And then after another half-life, this will be equal to N naught by four. Then after again another half-life, number of nuclei remaining in the sample means number of nuclei of X will be equal to N naught by eight. We can also write down in decimal form. So here we will have 0.50 N naught number of nuclei of X. And then we will have 0.25 n naught number of nuclei of x and then finally after three half lives we will have 0.125 n naught so these are the number of nuclei of x after one half life so this is after 1t and this one will be after 2t and this one will be after 3t so this one is after 1t and this one is after 2t and this one is after 3t now simply we need to sketch this one. First of all, we have N naught, and after one half life, mean at time capital T, we have 0 
point five zero and not and then after two half lives we have zero point two five and then after three half lives we have zero point one two five mean half of that so simply in this case you can count these small boxes we have one two three four five so here so this is the number of nuclei remaining after three half lives now simply we need to sketch so you can draw a curve so you need to connect these points so this is how you can draw the curve this is how you can sketch the curve not very good looking let me do this one again so you can see what's going on so let me sketch this again so simply you have to sketch like this yes this one is better one so this is how you need to sketch if you sketch this one you will get three marks for this question so simply very typical type of graph you need to sketch between number of nuclei and time i hope this one is clear to you so here we are talking about number of nuclei of x remaining so after one half life we have number of nuclei remaining 0.5 naught and after two half lives we have number of nuclei of x remaining 0.25 and after three half lives we have have 0.125 so this is 0.125 and not for the second part on figure 10.2 we need to sketch the variation with n of the activity a of the sample for values of n between n is equal to 0 and n is equal to n naught so first of all we need to understand how these two quantities are linked together means is there any formula which link these two quantities together we have one formula for activity and number of nuclei remaining in the sample a is equal to lambda times n in this case you can compare this one with straight line equation y is equal to mx so in this case gradient will be equal to lambda and lambda is constant so lambda is constant so the gradient of the line has to be constant and it has to be positive gradient so it simply means that we have initially n number of nuclei so the activity is this and when number of nuclei become half activity also become half and when we have no number of nuclei the activity is equal to zero now simply we need to connect these points together so simply we can draw a straight line connecting these points so this is how you need to sketch the graph and this question has two marks if you have sketched this line you will get two marks for part c we need to state the name of the quantity represented by the gradient of line in figure 10.1 and also in figure 10.2 this is figure 10.1 so simply we can write this is figure 10.1 and this one is figure 10.2 if you look at gradient of this one if you need to find gradient at any point for this curve gradient simply will be equal to delta n by delta t and delta n by delta t means the number of decays per second that is equal to activity so the gradient of figure 10.1 simply is equal to activity so we can write down this is equal to it let's say if you need to find the gradient at this point so you will draw the tangent line and you need to find the change in y divided by change in t so the change in y this is delta n and the change in time this is delta t so simply it is equal to delta n by delta t number of decades per second and number of decades per second is activity and for the second figure we have already discussed that a is equal to lambda times n so if we compare this one with straight line equation m means the gradient this is simply equal to lambda m here is the gradient lambda is decay constant so the gradient of this line we can simply say is equal to decay constant is representing decay constant that's all what you need to write down and this question has two marks if you have written activity here you will get one b mark and if you have written decay constant here you will get second b mark for the last part we need to calculate the fraction n over n naught at time t is equal to 1.70 capital T and capital T here is representing one 
half-life. And this one we need to calculate for the sample in P. And this is the graph for the sample in P. We need to calculate fraction. So simply we will start from radioactive decay equation n is equal to n naught e to the power of minus lambda times t. We need to calculate fraction so we can divide by n naught on both sides. Dividing by n naught on both sides, we will get n over n naught, and this is equal to e to the power of minus lambda t. But when well, if lambda is not given to us, but we understand lambda is equal to ln 2 over half life, over 1 half life, t 1 by 2, 1 half life. And 1 half life in this case is equal to capital T. So now we can plug in value of lambda here and we can simplify. So we can rewrite this one n over n naught. This is equal to e to the power of negative lambda. So we can replace lambda with ln 2 divided by capital T, one half life. And we need to multiply this one with given time. That is equal to 1.70 times T. In this case, we can cancel this T with this T. So we simply left with e to the power of negative times we have ln 2. We have to multiply this one with 1.70. And then if we simplify, we can get the answer. So let me show you how you can use calculator and you can calculate value of n over n naught. You can press E on your calculator and then you can use minus sign and then you can multiply with ln of 2 multiplied by 1.70. If you multiply this, you have to close this bracket and you will get your final answer. So final answer in this case is equal to 0. 307. So up to 2SF, we can write down 0.31. So this is our final answer for this question, 0.31. This question has two marks. The first mark you will get if you have written this step, means you have written n over n naught is equal to this one. You will get one mark and that is C mark. And the second mark you will get if you have got right value of n over n naught, mean if your answer is correct. So this is how these two marks will be awarded.